This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through this 2022 uh, Flagstaff Microlite Model 21 FBRS. Okay, so I'm just going to show you around, show you uh, some of the features, some of the components and how they work, okay? To start off with, we have uh, regular scissor type stabilizer jacks. It just takes a three quarter inch crank or a uh, three quarter inch socket on a drill. We have a power awning with LED strip. Uh, outside speakers, of course. This is the vet for the range hood. So there's a baffle there and a few, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's two little latches there. So if you're gonna vent to the outside uh, with the range hood, you wanna push up on those latches so that baffle flaps freely. So it vents to the outside. You have TV signal out, plus uh, power there. Plus, this is a bracket to hang a TV on. You get the other half of the bracket that's inside in one of the drawers, okay? If you want to put a TV outside. This, of course, is a furnace. Um, now, this comes with a griddle. The griddle hangs on a rack right here. Plus, you get a, a rubber LP line that connects to the griddle and then connects right under here at this quick connect. If you can see that, okay. So you have to plug that in. Right now, uh, this, uh, if you, I don't know how well you can see it. Let me turn some light on here. But that's it right there. And there is the rack for it. Right below it here is a, a metal utility table that'll hang on that rail right next to the grill. All right? This is a table right here. This table. Some people will store it in, I mean, it was just in this compartment. You can store it behind the, the couch, I believe. It should fit right in there if you, if you don't want it set up. But um, um, it's up to you. There's your, your uh, crank for your stabilizers. And then, of course, this small crank right here, the lower one, is for your power tongue jack. In case it was to fail, you can pull this plug out, put the crank on there, and crank this manually. Therefore, you can always get out of trouble, get hitched and not hitched. Also, while we're looking in here, you have a um, uh, Husky centerline weight distribution hitch with built in sway control. We'll show you how that operates when you pick up your trailer. Okay, so you have a power tongue jack, deep cycle marine battery, two LP tanks, which are full, and just so you know, Let's see if we can get a good picture of it. It's kind of hard to see, but right back there, underneath the shroud for the tanks, is a kill switch. You can you can turn that on and off, and therefore, let me get some light here. Therefore, uh, you can let me see if we get a better picture of it this way. There you go. So that way, you can turn the battery on and off uh, manually. So, okay. Okay, I don't know if I got a good picture of that or not, but it's there, trust me. Docking lights. This is just the other side of uh, your passenger storage. There's your, your power cord right there. 30 amp, 30 foot cord. Okay. All right, so... City water is the most common way to get water to the trailer. Now, if you're camping someplace um, off the beaten path, uh, you know, boondocking, whatever, you can pre-fill this water tank right here, fill it right there, and then you can use the onboard pump to pump the water. Um, so if you don't have city water, you can fill the tank and everything, will, all the plumbing will work as though you have city water. All right, this is your furnace. Oh, I'm sorry, no, it's not. It's your water heater, okay. Now, let me see what we got here. This works on both gas and electric. It has an electric heated element that's behind here, and then of course your gas valve here. Um, this is your drain plug slash anode rod right here. Uh, it takes an inch and a sixteenth six point socket, uh, and that's where it screws into. So right now this water heater is is empty, and the and the valves are bypassed, so it's in winter mode. Now when you're going to use it in the spring, make sure you put the uh, bypass valves into camping mode and then you fill this water this tank fill the water heater tank which is directly behind here 
uh, fill it before you turn it on because if you if you run it dry like that, it can damage it very quickly. Okay, so always make sure there's water in it. Uh, fresh water drain right down there, that white gate valve. Okay, uh, your slide room is a is a Schwintech style slide room. Um, it's owned by Lipper now, they've got their own name for it, but people still refer to it as a Schwintech, just, just in case you need to know that at any time. All right. Okay, so this is the city water connection right here. Most common way to get water to the trailer. This one is for winterizing the trailer. You'll have to do a little uh, research on that to learn how to do it if you're going to do it yourself. And then this one is a black tank flush right here. So after you dump your black tank, your valves are right here, of course. Black valve is toilet water waste, the gray valve is sink and shower water. But after you dump your black tank, you leave the valve open, like it says on this sticker here, leave the valve open. You put the hose of the dump station on here, turn it on, it'll spray out the inside of your black tank, clean it out really well, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. And these two coaxes are just cable and satellite through to the inside of the trailer. Okay, that's our, our shop cord there. I showed you your cord in the uh, inside the uh, front compartment. This is just a shower slash sprayer. Uh, this housing up here tells us that this is pre-wired for a backup camera. So you can add a backup camera to it. This is a Furion system, so um, it's kind of a plug and play deal. It's very easy to do. Um, you have a ladder, which is great because manufacturer says you should inspect your roof every 60 days. So you want to go up there, have somebody go up there, look around, make sure there's no crack in or separation at any of the sealant. Make sure there's no damage to any roof attachments or uh, roofing material by, let's say, low branches or road debris flying up there. Just give it a good inspection to make sure everything's in good shape. That way you can stay ahead of things. Okay. So let's go inside here. All right, I've got the heat going. Thank goodness. Okay. So, where should we start? We'll start right here. This is a 12-volt DC refrigerator. So it, it's got a compressor just like your refrigerator at home. This one, instead of running on 110 AC, runs on 12 volt DC. Okay. I come down here. This is um, your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green like it is. If it's not green, uh, get it serviced, okay? Also, if this beeps very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. So. If, uh, let me there. If, if your, um, if your uh, alarm goes off, you just leave, take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, and figure out what's going on. All right? Now, this, this trailer has different options. This trailer has solar panel in it, or on it. It also has a power inverter. Inverter takes 12 volt DC and inverts it to 110 AC. And then it has a converter, which is this right here. This converts AC to DC. So it starts off with 110 AC and converts it to 12 volt DC. So let's start with this here. On this side, you got 110 AC circuit breakers, just like you'd have at home, okay? And they're all labeled. So that's kind of your distribution panel here. Then uh, it's converted to 12 volt DC on this side. So you got 12 volt fuses and they're all labeled, right? Um, so that's where your 12 volt is coming from when you're plugged in. It comes for your batteries also, but this is a battery tender. So when you're plugged in, it's going to sense how much energy your battery up front needs and it'll always keep it charged. If the battery is totally charged, it'll just trickle a couple of amps up there to, to top it off to maintain it. If it's low, it can send 10 amps or whatever the battery needs to, to be charged. Of course, when you're pulling down the, down the road, your uh, alternator on your tow vehicle will be charging the battery also. So, so this converts AC to DC power, plus it charges your battery. That's converter. So let's go to the inverter now. Okay. The inverter is actually in the in a compartment up front, but this button right here is where you control it. Um, you see it right here? So if I push it, it lights up green. And right now it starts to invert power. So it's taking 12 volt DC from the battery. Let's say we unplug the trailer so there's no AC power. It'll take the 12 volt DC out of the battery, invert it to 110 AC, and then it'll send it to the uh, 
regular duplex receptacles here. So the idea is if you've got an AC appliance, you know, a, a, a coffee pot or a hair dryer or whatever, and you have no AC power, you can still plug it in here and, and run off the battery. So um, that's an inverter. You don't invert power unless you need to. So if you're not doing that, it's best to just shut it off. You hold this in for a few seconds, and then it'll shut down, okay? So unless you need to invert power, uh, you don't bother, okay? Um, while we're standing here, uh, there's, this, uh, there's storage up here like a foot locker, sort of. And then there's three drawers below. So you got a lot of storage there. This sofa jackknifes flat. By pulling out the bottom, it'll lay flat. You can turn it into a bed. And I said that table, you can, you can put it right back here, I believe. If you want to keep it there. All right, so... We're still talking about power, so let me come on over here to the solar controller. <laughs> so this is a solar charger controller. Um, button A you don't really have to mess with. It just, it just has to do with setting the bad type of battery. Right now this says flooded, because um, it's a flooded battery. Uh, but let's just scroll through. You push B, I'll get back to so right now you have 13.5 volts up front, right? Um, you push it again, and right now, because it's getting dark outside, you're just getting 0.3 amps from the solar panel and it's sending it to the battery. So during the day, obviously, depending on what time of year it is, what position the sun is in the sky, how clear the skies are, you can get, you know, five, let's, let's say 5.4 amps going to your battery, for example. Right now, it's only 0.3 because it's getting dark out. Uh, you see the picture of the sun and then the solar panel. So you poke it again, push it again, your battery is 100%. And then you have amp hours right here, okay? Now, if this starts to um, just flash and says FUL, um, and, and you think there's something wrong with it, there's nothing wrong with it. What's happening is the battery is completely charged. There's no no room to store any power, so the solar panel just clicks off and um, will turn itself back on automatically once, you're, once the voltage in your battery drops or the average in your battery drops. So um, if you see that happen, it's just telling you you're totally full. Um, now there's an app for this here, so you can download the app. And uh, you can see the different options here too. So this has got like a, for example, if you to make it simple, if you wanted to charge a phone and you lost all your power, you just plug your USB into here, and the solar panel would charge the phone. Just for an example, anyway. Okay. All right. So that's your solar controller. So obviously, solar panels uh, convert the sun into 12 volt DC, so it, it puts it right into your battery for storage. The more batteries you have, the more power you can invert, and the more backup power you have. So just make sure if you add batteries, there's one up there, if you add batteries, uh, uh, wire it together so they stay, they continue to put out 12 volt. You don't want to double the voltage, you just want to double the storage, okay? So make sure you do it like that. Um, your TV it has all, let me see here, what we've got here. Okay, so your TV is on a swing-out bracket. Make sure you lock it in place when you're traveling so it doesn't damage something. Also, you can see this little green light. Hopefully you can see that right there. Right there, hopefully. That little green light is on. There's a button next to it. You can shut it off if you wanted to, but if you do, you won't get a good picture. It's basically, that's a signal booster for the digital antenna. So you always want that on. Um, when it comes to your radio or your sound, you have a, a AM FM radio, you have a USB, so you can, you know, put all your albums onto one USB stick and take them with you. You have Bluetooth, so you can stream wirelessly from your phone or your tablet. Um, three speaker zones. Both of these, one and two, are inside. There, it's not. It's just, you always need both of those on. Three uh, is is. Uh, outside the trailer, that Z3, Zone 3. <laughs> the reason I'm telling you this because you can set set to, let's say you're watching a, 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 a 
a disc here, a CD or a DVD. There's the slot for the DVDs. So you're watching a DVD, but somebody wants to listen to the radio outside. So if you push zone three, and then set the uh, source, which would be FM radio, a station, and the volume, it'll it'll set a different source and, and the volume and all that to the outside. So um, you'd be able to listen to the radio outside while someone's watching a movie in here. But you do that by pushing zone three, which will um, um, which will uh, switch it to the outside speaker. So keep that in mind. Hopefully, I made sense when I said that. Keep in mind, there's a packet in here. It's got all the uh, all the, uh, the information I'm giving you. Plus, you can always go online and look at manufacturer's videos too to uh, to uh, refresh your memory. All your stuff is in here. Your literature here. This is a, a tire pressure and temperature monitor for your wheels. Right? You have two extra battery cables to jump another battery together, to hook two batteries together. They give you one, one, one set for that. This is the other side of your outside TV bracket. And this um, uh, hose here is an LP hose that I told you about. This is the one that you use to connect uh, your, uh, your brittle to the LP system. Okay? There's also a second coax there in case you need it. <coughs> okay. All right, so this is the range hood. I told you there's a baffle on the outside. If you're going to use the fan to vent to the outside, just make sure you uh, open that baffle so it does vent to the outside. Um, your range here has obviously uh, burners and an oven. Very simple. Always travel with the cover shut. Never leave it open when you're traveling. Um, so this is the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark three knobs and three burners and then this one here is for the oven then you have a light here too by the way two light an oven light and then a top light so anyway so for the center burner you're just going to go like this and spark it that simple you do that for all or one or all of the burners whatever you want to do now when it comes to the uh, oven all the way at the bottom, all the way to the back, there's a pilot light. I can spark it so you can see it. See it back there? Okay, so what you do is you go to the oven knob, go to the picture of the flame, which means um, pilot light. Then you depress it. You keep it depressed during the whole lighting procedure. Then with your other hand, you're going to spark it by turning it clockwise to the lights down here. Once it lights, you hold it for another 10 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. Then you go to whatever temperature you want. It'll cycle it as an oven does. When you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to reuse the, or relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. Let me look around in this main area, see if I forgot anything. I think I've got it. Your thermostat is just an, an analog thermostat. It's self-explanatory. Try to keep your fan on auto, and then you just choose your source right there. Or your your uh, your uh, appliance. You, appliance. You have basically you have heat, fan, and cool. Fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. It just circulates air, and then cool, of course, is full air conditioning. So you get three options. All righty. So. GFCI here. All the plugs in the trailer, even the one on the outside, are wired to a GFCI. This one right here. So if you're using something outside and it pops, you're going to reset it in here. Okay? Um, works like any other uh, sink or uh, vanity sink does. When you look at the shower, it does have another energy saving uh, device here called a shower miser. Alright, so this is a water recirculator. There's two positions, right? So, when, when, when the water is heating up for the shower, it generally just dumps the clean water right down the drain. So you're wasting good water, and if you're in an area with a drought conditions, you're not allowed to do that. And all, not only that, you're wasting storage space in your gray tank. So what you do is uh, you turn on your hot water, and you go into this position, and it, and it circulates the water around in a loop. It goes back from to, back to the 
water heater loops back around here back to the water heater and keeps going nothing goes down the drain right it just starts to heat up as it heats up or when it heats up this blue will turn into like a beige color and you'll see it is a clear clear change of it you'll, you'll, there'll be a no doubt in your mind it'll change to a beige color that's where you know the water is hot once you see that happen you just move it and it turns it into a regular shower but the water's already heated up so you don't waste any water uh, while heating it uh, and you don't waste any space in your in your gray tank heating up so it's it's a it's a eco type device okay shower miser now the toilet is like uh, any other RV toilet and you can't use it dry there's a flush pedal right there by dry I'm talking about the black tank which is directly below so that would be your black tank down there um, right now the water is not hooked up so um, if I normally if you step on that pedal it'll flush it'll just water will swirl out right so after you get to the campground you hook up your power and your water you come in here you put, you put one dose of chemical right in the bowl then you do this with the pedal and water will come swirling out you put about a gallon or so of water in there along with your chemical you can use more water but you really don't go less than a gallon you can't use it dry because if you do the smell will be super terrible plus it can get clogged up so you always want water and chemical in it before you start using it you can never use it with a dry black tank okay that's important also you've got a four-speed fan here self-explanatory you got on off and then you got the, the speeds and you got to open the lid right here so four speed it's a great thing because if you let's say you got a bunch of people over and it's the time of the year where you start to get condensation from your breath at night um, you can turn that fan on low and it'll suck the, any kind of condensation right out you can barely hear it running and it'll keep it nice and dry so it's uh and also it when it's it, let's say it's um not quite uh warm enough to run the air conditioner you can turn that on high and it'll cool this whole trailer right down okay okay so let me look around here i think i've got it pretty much yes yes okay so i want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at national rv detroit um, please remember for what I said about inspecting the roof and the seals. Generally speaking, people don't do that enough. You're just protecting your investment, you're staying ahead of things. Odds are you can go up there for years and you won't have to do anything. But you're just checking to make sure, okay? Um, right now this is, a, this is a winterized trailer. All, all the water has been purged from the system and replaced with antifreeze. The water heater is um, in... Um, in bypass mode and it's empty so it's all set one last thing here if I can find it here we are this there's also um, by the water pump you'll find a, a water canister that this filter fits in this is just a carbon block filter but it does a good job of removing minerals and things out of the water there's the wrench for it okay so you can always add this. If you use this, you only it only lasts for one season. You replace it every season. Uh, this is an extra collar to in case your your dump hose gets run over. You can always get yourself out of trouble with this. You get a spatula, and then of course your toilet paper uh, uh, roll holder and a towel holder. Most people don't use that. They use a stand because the walls are very thin, and you have to hit a you have to hit a stud um, in order to mount it. Otherwise, it'll just get pulled off the wall. But Nevertheless, the option is there, so keep that in mind. And like I said, right now it's winterized. It's all set till uh, the spring. So uh, in the spring, you, you uh, dewinterize it, putting water in the system, and make sure you fill the water heater. You change the valves on the back of the water heater, and then you fill it before you turn it on. Okay? Thank you.